Hello, I'm Waffles Are Better. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the dimension type file in a Minecraft Java Edition data pack. Using this file, you can customize things like how your dimension looks. For example, as you can see, it is going to be always nighttime in my dimension. It will always be midnight because of the stuff I've set in my dimension type. You can also set how specific things work. So for example, if I go ahead and click on this bed, uh, it doesn't set my spawn point or anything, but it also does not explode because of what I have set in my dimension type. And that is just a few of the things in the dimension type file that you can customize your dimension with. So you'll see that I'm using the same data pack as I was using in my dimension tutorial. You need to have a pack.mc meta, and if you don't know how to do this, I will have an iCard linked up here. Uh, and then you need to have data, and then your namespace, and then a new folder called dimension underscore type. And then in there, you're going to create a new file. This is just going to be the name of your dimension type, so it has to follow the naming rules, of course, all lowercase letters, or numbers, or underscores, or periods, or hyphens. I'm just going to name it tutorial.json, of course. So the first thing that you're going to need is some curly brackets, and you're going to need to put in quotation marks logical underscore height. This is going to define the total height of blocks in your world that are counted as part of the dimension. So for the overworld, it is 384 because there are 384 blocks above the lowest block in the world, which is negative 64 in 1.18. This was 256 for the overworld in earlier versions. So for the nether, it is 128, even though there are 256 blocks that you can build in in the nether, 128 is the block of the nether roof. So the logical height determines what the game thinks of as the top of the dimension. So that means, like, if you use Chorus Fruit, it will not teleport you above the logical height because the game does not think of that as part of the dimension, really. If you are making a nether portal in the overworld and you walk through it, the game will not generate the nether side of the portal above the nether roof because that is above the logical height. So basically, logical height just controls how high portals and chorus fruit can take you. So next is Infiniburn, and this is going to be the tag that determines which blocks will always stay on fire in your dimension. So for the overworld and nether, it is only netherrack and magma blocks, and for the end, it also includes bedrock because the bedrock on top of the end pillars need to be constantly on fire because it just looks cooler if they're constantly on fire when there's an end crystal on top. So yeah, if you didn't know that, bedrock will always stay on fire in the end dimension. What you can do here, you have to put a tag, minecraft infiniburn underscore overworld, or infiniburn underscore nether, or underscore and to get the blocks that will always stay on fire in those three dimensions. You can also create your own block tag. You can check the icon card up here on how to create your own tag, and then that would be hashtag like your namespace. So let's say WB world gen, and then whatever the name of your tag is. And this does need to be a block tag. So I don't know why the extension for Visual Studio Code doesn't like this tag, but you do need to have it here in 1.18. So next is effects, and this is going to determine what the sky looks like in your dimension. This can be Minecraft Overworld, Minecraft The End, or Minecraft The Nether. And so the Overworld will have like stars and a sun and moon and clouds. The End will have the skybox of the end with the kind of void-like texture, and the Nether will have heavy fog in the dimension just like the Nether does. So I'm going to set it to Overworld for now. And next is ambient underscore light. And this is going to be, I think, between 0.0 and 1.0. I might be wrong on that, but the ambient light controls how bright it is in your dimension, even if there is no, like, skylight or anything, or no block light. And so this can help, like, light up a cave dimension. And I have noticed that ambient light actually affects mob spawning. I'm not really sure why, because it doesn't add to the skylight or the block light, I don't think but just keep that in mind while you're doing that. It might mess up mob spawning if you make the ambient light too bright. So I'm going to set this to 0.0, .0 for now. Next is respawn underscore anchor underscore works. This just determines whether the respawn anchor works or not. So if you set this to false, respawn anchors will explode when you try to use them, and when you set it to true, they will work like they do in the nether. So I'm going to set it to false. And next is has underscore raids. This just determines whether raids at villages can be started in the dimension by players with a bad omen effect. So 
this is true for the overworld. Then next is the minimum Y, and this is the lowest block in the world. It has to be a multiple of 16. For the overworld, it is negative 64. For the nether, it is zero. Basically, it just determines what the lowest location that blocks are allowed to exist are. Anything below that is just the void. I'm going to set this to negative 64, just like the overworld. Then there is also height. This is going to be the total amount of blocks in the world, so this can be the same as your logical height up here, or it can be a different number. So for the overworld, it is 384. So to get the highest block in the world, you need to add height to minimum Y, because height is the amount of blocks in the world starting at the minimum Y. So for the overworld, it is 320, because you add 384 to negative 64. And of course, this also has to be a multiple of 16. So I believe for the nether, this is 256 and this is 128, which means that you can place blocks up to 256, but portals can only be generated below 128. So next is natural, and natural determines like whether the world is natural like the overworld or unnatural like the nether. So when it is false, compasses will spin randomly and you can't use a bed to set your spawn point or sleep. And when it is set to true, nether portals can spawn zombified piglins like in the overworld. So I'm going to set it to false. Compasses will spin randomly and you won't be able to use beds. Next is coordinate underscore scale and this is going to determine how many blocks are equal to one overworld block. So for the nether it is 8.0 because eight blocks in the nether are equal to one block in the overworld and for the overworld and end it is 1.0 because one block in the overworld is equal to one block in the end. So if you set it to 100.0, if you have two blocks in your dimension that are 10 blocks apart, that is the equivalent of them being 1,000 blocks apart in the overworld. But if you set it to something like 0.5, if you have two blocks in your dimension that are 10 blocks apart, they will only be five blocks apart in the overworld. So this is used for both determining where to place nether portals when you're traveling between the overworld and nether, and also just teleporting. So next you're going to put piglin underscore safe. This is going to determine whether piglins turned into zombified piglins in your dimension. I'm going to set this to false because I want piglins to turn into zombified piglins in my dimension. After that is going to be bed underscore works. This is the same as respawn anchor works except for beds. So if I set it to false, beds will explode when I try to sleep in them. And if I set it to true, they will not explode when I try to sleep in them. However, if beds work, but natural is set to false, you won't be able to sleep in beds. They won't explode, but they just won't do anything. So next is fixed underscore time. This tells you what time it is in your dimension at all the time. Um, if you don't want to have a fixed time, if you want to have a daylight cycle, then just don't include the fixed time section. But if you do want to have a fixed time, then you can use this. This can be anywhere between 0 and 24,000. So 0 is the Minecraft equivalent of 6 a.m., which is sunrise. And 24,000 is the Minecraft equivalent of 5.59 a.m. the next day, which is right before sunrise. So if you want to make it midnight, you can make it 18,000 because that is what midnight is. It can also be anywhere in between. And remember that if you want a daylight cycle, you just remove this section. I'm going to put has underscore skylight. And this is going to be whether there is skylight in your dimension, of course. So if you set it to false, it will be like you are always in a dark cave. And even if it is the middle of the day, there will be no skylight. So next is has underscore ceiling. This is just to determine whether there is a bedrock ceiling in your dimension. I'm going to set it to true just because. And then lastly, I'm going to put Ultra Warm. So if it is set to true, the dimension treats water like the nether does, so water will evaporate and sponges will dry out when you place them. Uh, and it also determines how fast lava flows and how far it can flow and stuff. So basically it determines if the heat in the dimension acts like the nether. I am going to set this to false. So the last thing that you need to do is go to your dimension file and then go to the type up here. Make sure that you're not going into the generator type down here, but the dimension type, which should be at the top of your file, or at least outside of the generator. So this is going to be your namespace instead of Minecraft. So that is WAB World Gen, WAB World Gen, and then the name of your dimension type file. So that for me is tutorial. Then make sure that all of your files are saved and you can load this up in your world. All right, I have loaded the pack up. 
All right, you will see that it is midnight in the dimension. Okay, I have placed down the bed. I'm gonna go into survival mode. And theoretically, I should be able to click on the bed without dying, but I won't be able to set my spawn point. Yes, yes, that works. Yay! But yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about in this video, or if you have any suggestions for things you want me to talk about in the future, then you can let me know in the comments or join my Discord server, which is linked in the description. I'd like to thank my patrons, Tonta Turner and Sayori1. They are supporting me and the Waffles SMP, and I am very grateful. I hope you have a great day, and as always, thanks for watching.